weather's good. Um, and, and, and again, I'm Sandy Rosenthal. I started this group, and we built this just for people like you. So we're thrilled to see you here, and I was happy to come talk to you. I'm going to uh, take off from something you said um, and, and about how all of us are affected by this issue. The majority of the American people lives in counties protected by levees. So this is a national issue. This isn't just an issue that New Orleanians need to think about. And something else you said, uh, Professor Anderson, is how you know, when you go across a bridge, you expect it to work. Well, these levees are built by the federal government. We've never dreamed they wouldn't work especially built by the Army Corps of Engineers that had, before Katrina, built tens of thousands of miles of levees along the Mississippi, Missouri, and Ohio River. We, didn't, we, we expected these levees to work. Of course we did. And then what happened uh, after the levees failed, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers went on a PR campaign to spin what happened and blame us. And so what happened, this is why I started levees.org, it was bad enough that people like Mrs. Spencer, who lived in that house right there, and it flooded up to the gutter. It flooded this hot, okay? Flooded up to the gutter. So not only did she lose her house and lose everything, but she was being told, you should have been paying attention to your levees. What are you talking about? And it's our fault for <laughs> living here. And I, that was more than I could take. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. And that, among other things, uh, I decided to start levees.org. So on August 29, 2005, the home that was on this footprint here that you're standing oh, on okay. was picked up. Yeah. Oh, let me, let, me, let me back up a little. That's uh, cool. A monolith broke in that wall right there. The one right in front of you, see the cute little fringe tree that just blossomed? Yeah. Okay, but the monolith, the 30-foot wide panel that you can see broke right there. Oh, I see it. Okay. They're, they're a little hard to see. In the old wall, they're, they're a little easier to see the, the different monoliths. Oh my god, I think we got a pelican coming. This would be pretty we cool. saw a flock of them this yeah. morning. A flock? Uh, a I pelican, don't, uh, yeah. That, you don't often see them in the city. The reason you're seeing them right now is because we've had a lot of high winds earlier in the week, and pelicans hate high winds and, and high water, and they come inland. So we get to enjoy the pelicans when they do that. So you're lucky because you often don't see one. You don't, you don't usually, I, I, that's just very unusual. But anyway, a monolith broke four feet when water was four feet from the top of the wall. The Army Corps designed these walls that water could go all the way to the top. Four feet below it broke. And when it did, it unleashed water into this neighborhood uh, strong enough to take this house where we're standing, this house right here, and picked it up and carried it out into the T intersection right here, and the only reason it didn't go further is it was stopped by these two oaks, okay? And of course now the oaks have died from the salt water that was in, the salty water that was in that water, and they've died. Oaks don't like salt water. So, now why did this happen? In the night, just 15 years before Katrina, the Army Corps of Engineers was running behind schedule. Oh. And uh, when you run behind schedule, costs rise. So they're in trouble, and they had just gotten a, a whooping by the Government Accountability Office who'd taken too long. So they're going, okay, so uh, we're behind schedule, but we need to look for ways to save money because we're over budget. And they, they looked for ways to, to um, save money with st steel. Steel's very expensive. They were using steel to drive it into the tops of the levees. But that's, what, that's what you're seeing there. What you're seeing is a concrete-covered steel sheet piling, okay? Steel's very expensive, and they need to use steel on, you know, hundreds of miles of levees. So they're looking for ways to save money, and that's fine. I look for ways to save money every day. I'm sure we all do. There's nothing wrong with that. So they did a large-scale test in the Atrophalaya Basin, which has soil just like we have here. And as a result of their study, they determined that they only needed to drive steel sheet piling down into the levee about 17 feet instead of 50, okay, as a result of their test. They made a mistake. They misinterpreted the results of their study, and the results of that study and that decision doomed the city. Okay. Now, um, and when during Hurricane Katrina, not only did this wall break on this side, it broke on the other side too. Now, I'm not a civil engineer. But that's a pretty weak wall. <laughs> it broke on both sides. Okay. And the same thing happened. We're here. Okay. I wish this was a little bigger. I think when we redesign this panel, I'm going to make this bigger. 
Uh, we update them every couple of years. But we're, we are standing right here, okay? You are here. And this wall broke, and so did, um, so did another wall to the west of here, which a much, much bigger one, with really the most important drainage canal in the city. Okay, so, so this, this happened, and ever since the Army Corps of Engineers, ever since the Hurricane Katrina, the Army Corps doesn't do this anymore, which affects the whole country, okay, not just us here. So after Hurricane Katrina, and now I'm not a civil engineer, uh, if Professor Nelson were here, you'd be hearing a lot more engineering, <laughs> okay? I, I am a civic activist, and I'm going to talk about you know, why I started the group. And af after this happened, um, the Army Corps of Engineers spent millions and millions and millions. I don't know exactly how many millions, but I would easily, easily 25 million. Easily that I can prove, okay? But probably a lot more than that. Fooling the American public. Uh, they, they, they told a story that, well, Katrina was a huge storm. We, we didn't anticipate it. Uh, all those people in New Orleans are corrupt and lazy. And these are two things that were easy to believe. <laughs> the, 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 the American people drank it up. And when something doesn't challenge your worldview of events, it's, it's easy to accept, even with no data to prove it. So, this, so in, in several years after Hurricane Katrina, this was the story. Uh, my organization, with a lot of hard work, uh, reading detailed reports, 33 page reports, reading the whole thing. I, um, from research of mine for another project, figured out that uh, but this mistake with the, uh, with the sheet pile. It was buried in a deep, deep in a report. It was not in the executive summary. Okay? Well, that's, it was key. It was key. And there were some other details that were key that I, I don't, <coughs> not worth getting into here, but it was all a giant charade. We were fooled. Congress was full, the people who live here were full, the American people were full, and instead of the Army Corps of Engineers being reorganized, no one lost as much of the parking spot as the Army Corps of Engineers. And instead, our local levy boards got reorganized because everyone thought it must be our fault, we need to reorganize our levy boards. When years down, years later, they, got, they did nothing wrong at all. It's a travesty, it's perverse. And that's why I started Levy.org. And my book is almost finished, and I'm going to be co covering this bit by bit. I mean, the whole thing is going to be laid out for everyone to see. But the bottom line, even now, uh, even now the big media has got it. Army Corps of Engineers failed. Uh, this is no longer a secret. But the problem is most people have got it in their head that it was Katrina with a huge storm, and those people are lazy, and they stole the levy money and spent it on Mardi Gras which was ridiculous. No one steals money from the feds and gets away with it. Nobody. But it was easier to believe that than the Army Corps of Engineers could have screwed up. And they did bad. Uh, as, as Professor Anderson rightly said, it wasn't malfeasance. It was a mistake. It wasn't criminal. It was a mistake. But, but if private people, private companies, had signed off on those levies, they'd be in prison. That's right. Can't, but, um, generally speaking, you can't sue the federal government. Right. That, that, that's, that's the what problem. That's what I was getting ready to say. There was a lawsuit, a uh, class action lawsuit, uh, it, but in, uh, as early as 2008, they had to dismiss it. 2008, that's correct. They had to dismiss it. Uh, a federal uh, Stanwood Duval, judge, Stanwood Duval, was hot sick about it. He said the Army Corps is definitely responsible, but you can't sue them. You can't sue them. And had to dismiss the lawsuit. I know it's awful. So the people, like Mrs. Spencer, she held on to her house for ten years, and finally she wanted to move back. She was living with a with a with her daughter in Texas. She wanted to move back. She wanted to move back, but she kept getting hit with fines because the grass was too high. Because she's not here, she can't come out and see what's going on. Finally, she just had to sell it, and she's heart sick about it. And the conversations that tear my heart out. Actually, the happy my organization bought the house and we're turning it into a museum. So the next time you bring a crew here, we'll be able to show you a flood house museum. Cool. We're going to show people what it looked like a house was flooded. People are very interested in that, what it looked like after water was up to the ceiling. 